women have tried to bring on periods for various reasons. A, they want to know they're fertile, and B, they want to know they're not pregnant. And so they've used, you know, all sorts of herbs and things that they found all over the place. And a Persian physician called Rasis, he was writing in the 10th, 10th century AD. He gave advice to women starting with action to be taken at the time of intercourse to prevent the sperm from entering the womb. And he advocated codus interruptus and spermicide, stuff that you could put in. And the use of drugs, which they called in those days amenagogues, which would bring on bleeding. Some of them do and some of them don't. And he said, he wrote, if the semen has become lodged, there is no help for it, but she must insert into her womb a probe or a stick cut into the shape of a probe, especially good being the root of the mallow, whatever that is. And it should be left in all night and a day as well. The stick was to be tied to the thigh, unquote, so that it may go in no further. I don't know how far it thought it might go in. The woman must be patient and not use force. And in one or two weeks, the menses would appear and, quote, the whole thing would become open and clean. Now, this is putting a stick up into the womb for a couple of weeks. Mm. And uh, even in Sydney, there used to be a story that if you went in the top of a double-decker bus from Abbotsford out to uh, La Perouse or somewhere, there was a bus that went out to, where to go to? Abbotsford to Bondi or somewhere like that. If you went on the top of the bus and jumped all the time, you'd probably be able to have an abortion. <laughs> It was just one of them old wives' tricks. She made me sit in a hot bath for three hours. I had to drink a pint of gin. I'll never go through that again. It was terrible. I thought I was going to die. And it didn't work. There's that picture for, of an advertisement of, for abortion, for Beecham's pills. And it said, uh, and for restoring nature in her wondrous functions. Mm. Which, of course, means, you know, you take these and you'll get your periods back. Mm. Unfortunately, a lot of the women who tried to do abortions on themselves and even the ones who went to abortionists, uh, they would have a ruptured uterus or they'd, they'd push the catheter uh, and it would go up through the, through the, you know, through the hole in the vagina into the perineal cavity. And those are the things that they often died from. Uh, in 1941, 25% of maternal deaths, that's women who died having babies, 25% were from, due to abortion. Well, that's a pretty big list, isn't it? There were, there were, I'll have to tell you, 490 women died, but 125 of them died from abortion. And this was for, for the whole of Australia. And that, it, was, it was like that until 1965, when it was still 21%. And then it started going down. When Manhattan came in action into Victoria, the figures went down to 4.3%. There were three deaths out of 69, so maternal deaths were getting better, but abortion deaths were disappearing. And it was at Crown Street Hospital, of course, that I really came face to face with things like abortion and birth control. They would have women who had uh, toxemia pregnancy or some complication. They'd be told not to have any more children for several years, but no one gave them any contraceptive advice. In fact, just doctors did not give a lot of contraceptive advice. It was mostly shared amongst women themselves. It was really only after the pill came in that doctors became closely involved with birth control. I went to talk to the man who was the, um, the, the president of the Obstetrics and Gynecology Association. I don't remember what the exact name was, but he was the president. He was up in Newcastle, in Brisbane. And I said to him, uh, you know, what do you do about teaching doctors about birth control? And he said, we're not interested in that sort of stuff. We haven't got time for that. We're too interested in, you know, pregnancies. To terminate a pregnancy after more than 28 days is a criminal offence punishable in a court of law with uh, seven years jail. Do you understand this, you two? Well, actually, we used to, we used to go by a law that was introduced in the UK and where they decided that it was not illegal to do an abortion to save a woman's life. Uh, I don't remember anyone ever approaching me to advertise their services, but I was surprised that my patients managed to find out fairly easily where they could go. You know, they wouldn't let the woman know who they were and that sort of thing. And a woman was told, if anything goes wrong, you don't come back to us, you go straight to the hospital or something like that. 
and don't tell them anything about us. And in fact, even in the hospital, uh, we would know that the woman had had an illegal abortion by somebody, but it was only when she had to, was asked to do her dying depositions that we actually tried to get information about the abortionist himself. We just accepted it before that. Uh, and of course, a lot of women wouldn't give dying depositions. I don't blame them. I know all about you and your bleeding abortion round the corner for ten pounds. When the Whitlam government came in and they started a community health program, this was just about the time that the women's movement had set up this group called Control, in which they were send they were they were set up there to to counsel women who needed an abortion, arranged for them to go to a particular abortionist, arranged the fees and so on, you know, and advised them where to go, and they kept an eye on the way they were being treated too. This originally was set up to be a medical clinic and to provide abortion for women. The Leichhardt Centre had that, that aim in right from the beginning. And then we decided to do our first, uh, first abortions. Now, as soon as that happened, of course, uh, in fact, it was before that happened, when, when, when they were really started up and they knew that this was one of the aims of the Leichhardt Women's Centre. Um, the churches all preached against it. The right to life preached against it. They're going to do abortions. And so women thought, oh, good, that's where we can go. <laughs> and we had people come from Queensland even down to... We didn't do a lot of them, um, but we got a reputation for doing them. Now, just about the same time, the Preterm Foundation was being set up and I was interested in that and I went with Dorothy Nolan who was the superintendent of the Preterm uh, Clinic. We went up to Newcastle to a man who was doing these uh, abortions, no touch technique abortions. Well I think the, Im the main impact of Levine was that it meant that the abortionists could, op could operate more openly. Um, now I think when the Leichhardt Centre opened it also made them bring their prices down a bit because they charged a lot of money before. Did it encourage more women to have abortions? Uh, it didn't. Um, if you look at the figures... Or did it make it easier for them? It just made it easier for them, yeah. yes. Uh, they could go to somebody, they'd know somebody. But, you know, if a woman wanted to have an abortion before, she'd go to terrible lengths to find it. Now, I'd also have to say that none of those things have made abortion legal. You cannot say that abortion is legal in, a, in, a, in use of us. Abortion is still illegal, but what they have done is broadened the actual interpretation of what can make it legal. So that under certain circumstances, abortion is legal. But the basic legislation still says it's illegal. And in, this, in Victoria and ACT, they've actually abolished that law that says abortion's illegal. Uh, now, the trouble is, too, that sometimes when people get up in Parliament and try to move legislation that will abol abolish those laws, or try to make a law that uh, makes ab abortion, you know, more e easier to obtain, there's always somebody on the opposition side, like Fred Nile, who will move amendments which actually does cut down, cut down the importance of the, of the original legislation. Now, that happened in Western Australia. In oh, the, yes, I think the, the situation in Australia has improved very well um, because women can get abortion almost every country, in every state, rather, uh, and although there are regulations, I think they do the abortion anyway. And these women who, are, who do have, have an abortion have usually got very good reasons for wanting to. And they often do regret it, I, I agree with that. But then, you know, they should be allowed to make their own decisions about this. Mm -hmm. And they know what their circumstances are. Um, but I think it's a painful decision for women to make. Mm -hmm. And so I would never just sort of dismiss them and you know, mm -hmm. say, oh, they're being careless or something like that. Mm -hmm. Globally, uh, I think abortion is still a very important cause of death in third world countries. And there isn't a country where women haven't tried to look after their pregnancies.